So Bob, what do you feel are the driving forces of silicon photonics? Well, Melissa, thanks for having me. You know, I mean, look, silicon photonics has been this technology that has been almost in the realm of science fiction for so long. It's been around for decades. And the idea of, of, of using light to transmit uh, data sounds amazing. And of course, especially now, we're in this world where the demands for moving huge amounts of data because of AI are really growing you know, quite rapidly. The challenge, of course, has been that uh, getting the power reduction down has been a big issue. But what we're also seeing is that silicon photonics is being adapted to other applications as well. We've, we've got high-speed interconnect, you know, in chiplets. Because another big thing that's happened is this notion of chiplets, where we have multiple independent components within a larger SOC, system on chip. And they're using uh, things like silicon photonics to do the interconnect between them. So we've also seen it being deployed for LiDAR, for autonomous cars. So there's all kinds of these different applications. But the one, of course, getting the most attention is indeed around Gen AI, these huge data centers, these racks and racks of GPUs, all this high bandwidth memory. And then there's the interconnect uh, between the different racks. And so we've seen some discussions. Uh, Recently, we also saw some concerns being raised around that uh, because of some of the power draw that's being used for silicon photonics. But look, at the end of the day, this idea of high-speed interconnect and being able to integrate logic onto some of these chips, so you have chips that have both the uh, silicon uh, the photonic side of things as well as logic together, that's where things start to get interesting because you can start to develop new sorts of applications. And so I think you're going to see right now a focus on this sort of mainstream movement of data across environments. And then on top of that, you're going to start to see some of these other more interesting applications, you know, more on the edge, shall we say. Uh, and I think that's going to be the interesting areas to watch for silicon photonics. Exciting. And I am excited about those new applications coming up as well. I think we will cross over to different industries. So with that said, where do you see silicon photonics going in the future? Well, I think, you know, the big issue is going to be around some of that power draw. And I mean, we saw this recently raised, you know, uh, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, talked about how they wanted to be using silicon photonics uh, because of the, the speed benefits that it gave them, but they were concerned with the power side of things. So the trick is, how do we get the speed benefits that silicon photonics can provide as we move to these trillion parameter uh, foundation models and yet do so in a way that can reduce that power draw? Because of course, GPUs by themselves are drawing huge amounts of power. And then you've got the HBM memory as well. So you've got to figure out a way to reduce that power. And I think that's where we're going to see a lot of developments happening. Uh, so I think that's one very important area to watch. And again, the other area is going to be on, I think, high-speed interconnect on chiplets. So you've got the big bandwidth sorts of transactions across large systems, and then those tiny little uh, bandwidth connections. I mean, they're not tiny in, in terms of the amount of data they're moving, but in terms of length. So figuring out how to be able to do that high-speed data transfer, both in those smaller environments and the larger environments, I think it's going to be exciting. And they're going to lead to different types of benefits in different types of industries, as you suggested. Thank you. 